Okay guys, so good morning. So um this is our first meeting for PMLS one. So this is actually PMLS one is about introduction to medical laboratory science, laboratory safety as well as waste management. So this is a three unit lecture subject. So uh so I am your instructor for both PMLS and MTLB, so I'm Miss, Mrs. Okay, this is Suzette Dr. Larry Itay. You can call me Ma'am Suzy for short. I'm already 27 years old and I have 1.5, one and a half, one and a half years of clinical experience at the tertiary laboratory in Makati City. So that was here 2014 to 2016. Okay, so I started working at the age of 20, even if I was not able to secure my license yet because by law you should only be able to get your license if you are already 21 years old. Okay, so uh, for me kasi maaga akong nag-schooling so yun, maaga din matapos yung um, maaga din ako nag-graduate. So as I thought well, I started my ac academic experience way back 2016 so I'm already teaching in I'm already teaching in this program of BS uh, MLS for six years already. Okay. So for your uh, the grading system, so this is not actually updated. So this is just thirty percent fifty percent for your exam. Okay. Uh thirty percent for quizzes. For learning tasks, this is fifteen percent. Um and the attendance is 5%. So, historically, the university doesn't want to have or doesn't want to put any percentage for the attendance. But during this pandemic, um, they already put, they allowed us to have a 5% on the attendance. Okay, uh, we already defined the medical technology based on the Philippine Medical Technology Act under Section 2, right, in your MTLB, okay, so I will not, uh, will, um, so as a review, so we as MedTech, again, we perform laboratory analysis using machines, procedures, reagents, in order to uh, yield reliable and accurate test results that are used by physicians in their diagnosis, Okay, in, in their monitoring as well as in uh, the therapy of the patient. Again, uh, may I remind you that we do not do um, interpretation for the diagnosis. Okay, we just give the test results to the doctors and it is them that do the interpretation okay, and the diagnosis. Okay, it's not us, it's never us. Because basically, we are not physician, okay? And by law, we are not allowed to do so, okay? History, so, uh, for the learning objectives of this discussion, we will trace the history of medical technology, okay? We will discuss the development of medical technology uh, in global context, as well as in our country, okay? The Philippines, okay? So, <clears throat> So we have it here. So Hippocrates is um, widely known as the father of medicine, okay, because of his contributions in the field. Okay, so um, it was him who had the qualitative assessment of disorder, the measurement of the different body fluids, which he regarded as the four humor. So these four humors are actually the blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. Okay, so that is blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. He also advocates the tasting of urine. So imagine, okay, so these were practices historically. So, pero sobrang tagal na ito. See, um, it's before Christ. Listening to the lungs, observing appearances in diagnosis of diseases. Okay, he also formulated the Hippocratic Oath, 
which is uh, be uh, used by um, doctors, okay? So, they memorize this one. It's their basic rule. It's their, it's their guide. Okay, he also advocates um, 900 uh, AD. Okay, so the book on characteristics of Yin was written. Okay, um, for Hippocrates also, he wrote the Euroscopy. So this is a book uh, related to Yin. Okay, so he also formulated the... Um, humoral pathology okay were in under this subject there is a source of disposition and diseases so this was in ancient times okay so urine was used as a marker of diagnosis so um that is actually the oldest laboratory method okay or the old yes uh, laboratory method is um, urinalysis okay so urinalysis that is analysis of urine when I say polyuria that is there is um, an increase in the production of urine okay so actually this is um, to correlate this one in diabetes mellitus there are these are the signs and symptoms the 3p polyuria polydipsia and polyphaga okay polyuria means excessive urination uh, polydipsia um thirst okay so a diabetic patient is always thirsty and polyphagia okay um they are in constant hunger gusto nilang kumain lagi okay they have the need to feed themselves um because okay, the body do, does not synthesize the sugar present in the blood. So, na, there is a signal sending in the brain that gutom sila lagi. Okay? Parang kulang kasi sila lagi sa energy. Hindu physician recorded the sweet taste of diabetic urine. So, imagine they were tasting the urine of diabetic patients. Greeks conclude diabetes by observing the urine if it is if ants okay if ants are attracted to it so um is there a scientific basis for one for this one yes of course guys because definitely for diabetic urine um there is a high concentration of sugar in their urine so therefore ants will be attracted to this uh, to the urine of diabetic patients okay so normally kasi if you are not diabetic um sugar will not be seen or will not be found in your urine since um you will not reach the renal threshold okay so hindi may excrete ang sugar normally sa urine natin okay but kapag masyadong mataas yung sugar content ng katawan mo, ng blood mo, okay, it will reach the renal threshold. That's why it will be released, it will be excreted in the urine. So, that is the case for diabetic patients or diabetic individuals. Chinese practice immunization to smallpox. Okay, so, this one, um, uh, this is, it has a very important Okay, effect or okay. this uh, has a significant effect in the medicine. Okay, why? Because you know, immunization really works. Okay, so it's like vaccination, it really works. Um, they trigger your system for, to produce antibodies against that disease. Okay, so that was practiced by the Chinese. So, Romans, on the other hand, develop um, medical devices. India, they practice toxicology, distillation, pharmacy analysis, and separation of minerals. So, as you can see, guys, so, India, they are very advanced when it comes to the field of medicine. 
Rufus of Ephesus first described hematuria by correlating the presence of blood to the physiological function of the kidneys. Is there a scientific basis about this one or about this idea? Yes, of course, guys. What do you mean by hematuria anyway? So, when you say hematuria, there is a presence of blood, okay, or hemoglobin in the uh, urine, okay? Pag mga urea, urea yung N, it refers to urine, okay? So, presence of hemoglobin in the urine. So, normally, if the kidney is functioning well, definitely, hindi dapat yan mag-release ng blood. So, remember the function of the kidney is that it filters the blood it cleans the blood right okay so normally all of the blood should be returned to the circulatory system okay so blood should not be excreted in the urine so in that case kapag there is a presence of blood in your urine it correlates to the function or to the condition of the kidney okay early egyptians stuck by herodotus as the healthiest man. So, yun nga, Rufus of Ephesus first described hematuria. And book on characteristics of urine was also written. So, in medieval laboratory practices, that is between 16th to 18th century, advancement of technology. Okay? So, there is the advancement of technology. Um, scientific methods were developed. Um, discovery of disease causing microorganisms. Okay, so um, it's the time where in um, a lot of microorganisms were identified as the causes of illness. Okay, so inventions of microscope by Zacharias Jensen as well. So actually, for the invention of microscope it's not Sakarias Jensen which is um we call this one um he's not the one uh that is being recognized for the invention of the microscope it's actually Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek outbreak of cholera uh, was traced by John Snow so he was able to identify that the um Vibrio cholerae for the cholera outbreak that happened in this period is that um, it's from microorganism okay, wherein it contaminated the sources uh, their, their source of, of water okay? so sa tubig siya na, na contaminate yung water nila kaya nagkaroon ng cholera outbreak so he was able to trace that it is from the water that the people are consuming. Okay. So again, cholera that is caused by a bacteria, okay, or a bacterium known as the Vibrio cholerae. So we have here the following on the first column, different scientists as well as their contribution in the field of medicine. So we have Athanasius Kircher. He used microscope to investigate the causes of diseases. Okay? So gumamit na siya ng microscope to identify or the, uh, yes, uh, to investigate if what is causing the diseases of his or her patients. Robert Hooke, on the other hand, published the micrographia. Jean-Baptiste Van Helmont developed the gravimetric analysis of urine. Frederick Deckers described protein in urine. So, if protein is present in urine, that is termed as proteinuria. Okay? Richard Lower performed the first blood transfusion in animals. So, later on in your blood banking, you will see that, um, you will know the long history for the uh, blood transfusion, okay? So, William Hewson described, Hewson described the process of blood coagulation, okay? Francis Holm developed the yeast test for sugar in diabetic urine. Matthew Dobson, on the other hand, identified sugar in the blood and urine of diabetics. 
So, as you can see, guys, in the history, okay, um, it, of laboratory methods. So, urine was the most um, used specimen, okay? So, in uh, 1500 BC, so, hindi maayos yung timeline na nagawa ko, okay, for this presentation, even in the module. Okay, kasi bumalik siya ulit sa 1500 because I combined the history uh, from the Medical Technology Loss book and from the PMLS 1 book. So, traces, Vivian Harry traces the beginning of medical technology way back in 15 BC, that is before Christ. So, Ruth Williams, um, in uh, when this one in Vivian Harry, so, he traces the beginning of medical technology in 15 uh, BC when intestinal parasites such as Tania and Ascaris were mentioned in the early writings. So, na-mention kasi yung presence ng parasite na Tania and Ascaris in the early writings um, that was written way back in 1500 before Christ BC. In 1096, okay, to 1438, um, that is the medieval period, okay, so, Ruth Williams believed that your analysis was a fad, okay, so, hindi siya niniwala. Medical technology from the 14th century when a prominent Italian, so it started daw, so this one, medical technology started daw when a prominent Italian physician at the University of Cologne employed Alessandra Gillian to perform tasks under the domain of medical technology. However, she died from laboratory infection. Okay. Ebers Papyrus, on the other hand, so the Ebers Papyrus is actually a book for treatment of diseases, okay? So, a book of treatment diseases that contains description on the three stages of hookworm infection, okay? So, ah, okay, so si Ebers Papyrus, so, um, he believed pala, he believed that the MT began when a book of treatment of disease published which also contain the three stages of hookworm infection so what are the three stages of hookworm infection guys so we have the egg we have the larva and the adult simple lang naman egg larva and adult Ruth Williams um, be, uh, believed that the medical technology began from medieval period early Hindu doctors made scientific observation that the urine of certain individuals attracted ants and what what such uh this urine okay and this urine also has a sweetish taste and fagel son on the other hand believed that the empty started when an italian doctor employed alessandra Gigliani. okay so you know from the previous slide to perform different tasks in the laboratory but Okay, he later died of infection. In 1632 to 1723, Anthony Van Leeuwen invented the and improved the microscope. Actually, it was Zacharias Janssen, right? Okay. However, kasi, what's the problem with the invention of Zacharias Janssen? Is that the magnification is only 10. Okay, so it still, it cannot still um see a lot of minute images or minute organisms, yung mga maliliit, very tiny, it cannot enhance the, or it cannot, um, zoom in, okay, um, or magnify images or microorganisms to which the eyes can see it, kasi 10 times lang yung magnification. Unlike for the invention of Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, he was able to invent a microscope with a 100 times magnification. Okay? So, it's like um, LPO already, low power objective, 100 times magnification. Okay? So, there you can see a lot already of minute um, things. Yung mga masyado maliliit na bagay. Okay? Like for the red blood cell. Okay? 
the protozoa, protozoa, and parasite. Okay, protozoa are unicellular parasite. One cell lang siya. They can exist as one cell. Unlike as humans, we are multicellular. Okay, but for protozoan, um, they can exist at a, as a single cell. Okay, and they can live on their own. Um, but they, of course, these are parasites. Okay, so they can live as unicellular organism. Um, the uh, Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek was also able to classify bacteria according to shape. So bacteria, they have different shapes. Okay, merong coxi, when we say coxi, pabilog, spherical, basilay, paoblong, may coco basilay din, combination ng coxi and basilay, hindi siya masyadong mahaba, hindi rin naman siya bilog. So, uh, this led to the rapid pro progress in microbiology as well as in pathology. Okay, so his invention contributed so much in the field of microbiology and pathology. So, uh, hmm. Malfighi described the, uh, as the greatest of the early microscopist and Mark as the founder of the pathology because of his work in embryology as well as in anatomy. Okay, so he is the founder of pathology. Rudolf Burko, on the other hand, is one of the youngest medical specialists and founded the Archives of Pathology in Berlin. In 1948, Hermann Felling performed the first quantitative test in urine. Okay, for the quantitative test, so it means that he was able, okay, to identify the amount of um, some analytes in the urine. Kasi when we say quantitative or quantitation, meron na siyang quantity, meron siyang amount. Like for example, yung sugar, meron na siyang value 15 mg per gl, 16 mg, 100 mg per gl. Meron siyang amount, specific amount. Okay? And that is really a good advancement in the field of your analysis. So, in the middle of the 15th century, anal aniline dyes were used in staining microorganisms. And bacterial staining and microscopic study on bacteria were made possible. So, these aniline dyes or bacterial stains um, are used to visualize um, many, uh, what do you call this one? Are used to visualize structures, okay? So, um, you cannot just see microorganism, okay, or the diff you cannot delineate, you cannot easily identify the structures without the use of stains, okay, just like in microbiology as well as in histopathologic techniques, okay, hindi mo makikita maigi yung mga structure ng mga bacteria as well as yung mga tissues without using the stains, Okay, so these are really important in the field of um, microscopy. So, establishment of laboratories. The first chemical laboratory was established at the University of Michigan by Dr. Douglas. He pioneered laboratory instruction in this well-equipped laboratory. So, parang siya yung nauna, siya yung pioneer sa laboratory instruction. In 1878, Dr. William H. Welch established another laboratory in Bellevue Hospital Medical College. He gave the first laboratory course in pathology offered in American Medical School. Okay? So, nagkaroon ng first laboratory, may nag-offer ng first laboratory course. So, in 1885, Dr. Welch became the first professor of pathology. Okay? So, yung pinakaunang professor sa Hopkins. 1886, first clinical laboratory was opened by John Hopkins. I, at the John Hopkins Hospital, this is a very um, prestigious hospital. Okay? The John Hopkins Hospital by Dr. William Osler. 
Okay, so sila yung first na nag-establish ng clinical laboratory. Okay, aha. Uh -huh. So, um, let me remind you na iba to ha, or I just want to clarify this one. First chemical laboratory sa University of Michigan. Pero yung first na clinical laboratory sa John Hopkins. When I say clinical laboratory, kasi this is intended for, this is a laboratory intended for laboratory analysis of specimens that is used for the diagnosis of, um, or monitoring of patients. Intended na siya para sa uh, mga pasyente. Okay? In 1896, the University of Pennsylvania also opened a clinical laboratory which is known as the William Pepper Lab. Okay? In 1908, Dr. James C. Todd wrote the book of Manual of Clinical Diagnosis. Um, the title was changed or it was renamed to Clinical Diagnosis by Laboratory Methods, okay? And this is, uh, it became the standard reference for laboratories, okay? So, huwag niyong kakalimutan yan, si Clinical Diagnosis by Laboratory Methods. So, it serves as the standard reference for laboratories. In 1900, 100 technicians were employed in the United States, Okay? So, ano sila? Sex bias kasi lahat male. In 1915, the state of Pennsylvania enacted a law requiring all hospitals and institutions to have an adequate laboratory and to employ full-time laboratory technician. So, lahat nag-start as technicians. Okay? So, in 1920, census of employment increased to 3,500. So, sobrang bilis from just 20 years, 100 to 3,500 laboratory technicians. In 1922, there were 3,035 hospitals. I, uh, for hospitals, there are 3,035 hospitals that had already their clinical laboratories. Okay? So, ganun na karami. In World War I, had a great impact factor in the growth of this field, the medical technology field, okay, and the growth of clinical laboratory because it produced a great demand for technician. Bakit kaya, guys? Because, of course, in World War I, there are a lot of patients and dami ding nawawalan ng tugo. Okay, so, um, increased cases, increased demand, right? Demand for technicians in the clinical laboratories continued. Practicing physicians with knowledge on laboratory works began to teach their assistants to do some tests for them. Kasi nga sa World War One, of course, there were many patients, okay? marami na ho hospital as the effect of the war. So, nag-produce nag din siya ng great demand for technicians. Uh -huh. University of Minnesota established one of the first schools for training laboratory. So, nag-establish siya ng training laboratory. In 1922, a course bulletin titled Courses in Medical Technology for Clinical and Laboratory Technicians was issued. Okay, so in 1923, they were the first to offer a degree level program. So, si University of Minnesota, yan na yung mga bachelor's degree. So, in 1921, Denver University of Clinical Pathologists were organized. So, in 1936 naman, nagkaroon or na-establish yung American Board of Pathology. So, World War II. So, it marked its effects in laboratory medicine. The use of blood increase and the closed system of blood collection was widely used. Pag mga closed system, we refer that as gumagamit na sila ng mga blood pugs. Instrumentation advance and these instruments paved the measurement of the intensity of color produced. So, so in clinical laboratory, in especially in clinical chemistry, um, most of, if yes, if not most, okay, but I think it's most 
most of the laboratory methods employs measuring changes in color intensity. Okay? So, yung iba, if not most, Okay, Ch yung, the, um, in clinical chemistry, some methods uses the change in color intensity to measure the quantity of analyte. Okay, so kapag nag-change in color, gano ka-intense? Kapag darker siya, mas marami. Okay, parang ganun yung idea niyan. Automated equipment appeared and quality control programs became common. Okay, so later on you will know that quality control procedures are very important to ensure accuracy and reliability of test results okay because in the first place um how are how sure are you that the test results are correct they are reliable so that can be answered by using quality control procedures Laboratory medicine moved to an era of sophistication kasi nagkaroon na ng automation. So, the progression of growth in clinical laboratory, okay, so, correlation ng pathology, okay, um, which is uh, the basis of some uh, facts or information, and then, uh, there, the development of clinical microscopy, okay, kasi di ba, Historically, pathology lang yung, or, or yung mga basic, uh, or yung mga knowledge regarding diseases. And then, the first uh, clinical laboratory method, okay, so you have there the urinalysis. So, yun yung clinical microscopy dito, okay, that is urinalysis. And then, um, blood cells, physiological chemistry, and bacteriology naman yung next na, na, discover okay pathology to clinical microscopy blood cells physi physiological chemistry and bacteriology so that is the progression of growth of the clinical laboratory pero ma'am why is it na sabi mo na all this method yung sa urinalysis and clinical microscopy pero meron namang nauna yung pathology kasi guys um this is not it does not refer to ano mga laboratory methods. Okay? So, clinical laboratory methods. CCM, kaya CCM or urinalysis yung first. Na laboratory method. Pinaka-old na clinical laboratory method. Okay? So, eto ulit. History in MTNUS. So, yan. Na-discuss na to. In 1986. John Colmer. So, Siya naman yung nag-recommend ng certification of medtech in a nation scale. In 1920, administrative units of clinical laboratories in large hospitals ba were directed by a chief physician. So, which means that um, historically, nag-start kasi siya na physician because nowadays, right, pathologist handles us. So, they supervise the work of medical laboratory scientists or medical technologists. So, ganun kasi din yung practice for mga practices nila before. Yung physician yung nagsusupervise ng mga uh, clinical laboratories. In 1922, American Society for Clinical Pathology, the ASCPI was founded of encouraging the cooperation between physicians and clinical pathologists. In 1950, MedTech in US sought professional recognition. Okay? So, yan na yung nagkaroon na rin ng licensure, examinations, and laws. This is US. In our country naman, in 1565, the first hospital Spaniards established Hospital Hill in Cebu. Okay? However, it was moved to Manila to cater military patients. In 1578, Franciscans built San Lazar Hospital for the poor and lepers. Okay, so these are regarded as individuals who were infected with Mycobacterium leprae. So, sila yung may leprosy. Okay, in, 19, in 1596, Hospital de San Juan de Dios was founded. 1641 Hospital de San Jose. Okay. Um, 1611 Dominicans founded the UST. Okay. 
So, mas marami na unang hospitals gay cases sa ano. Pero si USD naman, this is a university. So, in 1871, USD established the first faculties of pharmacy and medicine. So, historically guys, as you can see, wala tayo dito. Okay? Hindi tayo kasama sa ano. Nauna talaga ang pharmacy and medicine. Okay? Um, dito sa country natin na, in 1876, first provincial medical officer were appointed, and then nag-establish ang Board of Health and Charity. In 1887, Laboratorio Municipal de Manila was established, wherein um, it tests food and water as well as clinical samples. Okay, so hindi siya related sa testing of patients. In 1901, established Bureau of Government Laboratories. In 1944 to 1945, this is the end of World War II. Okay? So, remember, 1945. So, yan yung end ng ating pagdurusa. But, this is also the beginning of our, um, a, big, a good beginning for the medical technology profession. This is a very important um, event in the medical technology profession in our country. So let me read this to you. The 26th Medical Laboratory, U.S. Army, introduced the practice of medical technology in the country, okay, in the Philippines, by establishing the first clinical laboratory. Sila yung first nag-establish ng clinical laboratory at Caricada Street, Santa Cruz, Manila, where the public, Manila Public Health Laboratory was now located. So, hindi kasi nila pinangalanan, okay? So, they just, they established, I think hindi nila pinangalanan kasi in history books for medical technology, wala kasi siyang specific na name yung establish nilang clinical laboratory, okay? But, um, maybe this one, okay? So, I'm sorry guys, so it's actually this, so the 26th Medical Laboratory, okay? So, this one pala siya. Nag Nahilo na ako. Okay? So, 26th Medical Laboratory, U.S. Army. So, it's the U.S. Army that introduced the practice. Okay? So, eto yun. The Manila Public Health Laboratory in Santa Cruz, Manila. Okay? So, um, do not expect na sobrang ganda. Di ba? <laughs> no, hindi siya ano. But this is the first ever Okay, clinical laboratory, this 26th medical laboratory. Okay, so the also known as the Manila Public Health Laboratory. In 1944, a February, training programs were offered to high school graduates by clinical laboratory. Yun nga, in 1945, the U.S. Army left the clinical laboratory, so in endorse na nila yun sa Department of Health. Okay, however, it rendered it non-functional for some time. Hindi naging maayos yung management. In 1945, Dr. Pio de Roda formally organized the Manila Public Health Laboratory from the remnants of the clinical laboratory. So, thank you kay Dr. Pio de Roda. He was assisted by Dr. Mariano Aycasiano, who is the Manila City Health Officer at that time. So, uh, Dr. Pio de Roda and Prudencia Santa Ana revived the training of high school graduates. So, they trained high school graduates to work as medical technicians, but with no definite period of training set and no certificates given to trainees, which eventually disinterested them. So, actually, certificates are very uh, efficient in or effective, diba? when it comes to seminars and training kasi some individuals they go for the training and seminars for the certificates so there are cases that kapag wala yan, syempre mawawalan ka ng interest so it happened also to um, technicians to to this, in this case nangyari din siya sa mga medical technicians okay, so Meron kasi silang binibigay na training, but there's no definite period. 
and there's no certificate given. So what's the basis? How, uh, maybe what is interest of these medical technicians is that how can they use that knowledge, their training, if there is no um, proof that they have undergone the training, right? So, a six month, in 1954, a six-month laboratory, laboratory training with certificate upon completion was given to trainees. So, ito na, they learned from the mistake, their mistake, which is actually good. And Dr. Santa Ana prepared the syllabus for the training program. Dr. Kier Sobriones also joined Dr. De Roda, Dr. De Roda and Dr. Santa Ana in the said program. So, now, nagkaroon na ng pagbibigay ng certificate. William Hilgert Hedrick, founder of medical technology education in our country. Okay, so do not forget her. So, si Willa Hilgert Hedrick. So, it's actually, he, uh, she is actually an American medical practitioner and a missionary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay, so buti na lang meron siya. In the Philippines, who offered the first four-year BS degree course in medical technology through the PUC, the Philippine Union College, now known as the Adventist University of the Philippines. Okay? So, historically, siya si PUC, ngayon siya si Adventist University of the Philippines, and the Manila Sanitarium, okay? Or the Manila Adventist Medical Center. So she is she palahi ako nang she is um an Adventist, a Seventh Day Adventist um missionary, and he contributed so much in the field of medical technology in our country. Okay, because because of her, um the first four year BS degree course was offered. So si PUC yung pinakaunang nag-offer ng degree program for medtech. In 1954, the five-year curriculum leading to the degree of PS in MT of the PUC and the Manila Sanitarium was approved by the DEX. Okay, so wala pang CHED noon, si DEX pa lang. So that is the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports. So na-approve na siya as a degree or na-approve na yung degree na ino-offer ng PUC. At saka si Manila Sanitarium. In 1956, PUC produces its first graduate. So, imagine Dr. Jesse O'Malley. So, doctor yung unang naging graduate nila. Okay, so isa lang si Dr. Jesse O'Malley who became a successful OB gynecologist and owner of Omega Laboratory at Vito Cruz, Manila. In 1957 and 1958, Dr. Antonio Gabriel and Dr. Gustavo Reyes, who are, um, they are faculty of pharmacy in the University of Santo Tomas, they also offered medical technology as an elective subject to fourth and fifth years BS pharmacy students. So, they only off they offer this as just an elective subject, hindi siya degree, okay, degree program. Subsequently, Reverend Father Lorenzo Rodriguez decided to offer it as a degree program or as a course in the UST because of its popularity among the pharmacy students. Okay, in 1957, June 17, 1957, a temporary permit was issued to UST by the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports for the first third-year students. 1960 naman, the permit for the internship program was issued also to UST. In 1961, full recognition of the four-year BS MT course was given to UST. So, malayo, di ba? Kasi sa, um, sa PUC, you know, uh, they were able to produce the first graduate in 1956. Na meron na silang degree program, BS MedTech na talaga siya. Sa USD naman, dun lang na fully recognized, 1961, yung full year, ay yung full degree ng medtech. Okay? So, it's like 6 years or 5 years. So, this is the prestigious University of Santo Tomas. So, these are students of Santo Tomas. Okay, in their uniform. So, ganyan yung uniform ng ano, medtech. Okay? So, under kasi tayo, in, in UST, under ng Faculty of Pharmacy yung sa Medtech. 
Okay, so ganito yung ano yun yung formula. In 1960, the CEU through purification si Nico Suaco after the approval of Carmen Beluna, he also offered the BS MedTech. Okay, so as you can see here, 1960, na Fernola and the first graduates were in 1962. Okay, baka ano na siya, um... in-offer siya sa mga dati ng student or hindi siya full degree, hindi siya four-year course. In 1961, the FEU started its School of Medical Technology. So, halos ano na sila, nag, nagsabay-sabay na. Okay, through Dr. Ho Horacio Ila uh, Ilagan Ilagan and Dr. Sefarin Juliano after the approval of Dr. Laura Panganiban and Nolasco, the Dean and Secretary of FEU Institute of Medicine respectively. So, in 1961, yun nga, na-approve na rin siya sa FEU na i-offer nila. In 1962, in July 5 of 1962, FEU formally opened its School of Medical Technology after the Bureau of Education approved its application. So, si Ilagan, Dr. Ilagan Bikindi, technical director and the first graduates of the school were in 1963. So, imagine guys, ka-open lang nila and nagpa-graduate sila a year later. So, maybe because this one, they offered it to students who were already in their third year or fourth year of, ano, um, schooling that is related to uh, medical field. But I'm really not sure about that. Okay? So, history, yan, sa FEU. City of Manila, mga prestigious school, yung mga unang nag-offer. University of the Philippines. So, si UP naman, they do not offer a degree course in medical technology, but instead, they offer a BS, bachelor's degree in public health. Okay, so public health naman siya. Though, hindi sila, it's, it's not the same. Public health and BS in medtech is not the same, but Students of public health can take the licensure examination for medical technology. Okay, so postgraduate studies, ito yung sa postgraduate. Okay, so after taking BS program. So PWU, Philippine Women's University, SLU, Baguio City, and UST, they offer a master's degree in medical technology. And UP naman offer master's in public health. As well as CCSU, it offers ano, Masters in Public Health, both thesis and thesis. I don't know if they still offer an thesis, but I think puro ano na siya with thesis na. So, Commission on Higher Education requires postgraduate studies as an important requirement for tertiary faculty members and as a prerequisite for accreditation for schools of medical technology. that wish to upgrade their level. So, we as your faculties are required to have our postgraduate studies. Okay? Kaya, nag-enroll kami sa mga, ano, uh, nag-enroll kami sa hindi ko yan, sa Masteral Degree Program. Okay? Unfortunately, hindi pa namin natatapos. Okay? So, Um, that ends our discussion for the history of medical technology in our country. Of course, you will have a quiz for this. Okay, so thank you so much for listening and God bless everyone. Thank you, thank you.